For 500 years, Atlantic cod was the dominant species in the commercial fisheries of Newfoundland and Labrador. With the introduction of the cod moratorium in 1992 and the subsequent reopening of all NAFO divisions around Newfoundland and Labrador, the cod fishery today is much different than it was historically. Even though some harvesters have returned to fishing cod, there are still some inherent problems within the industry. Many of these problems are fishing gear related. Gill nets and long lines are now the preferred fishing gears. These gears catch fish by hooking or meshing and some portion of the fish may die in the water before or after gear is retrieved. In some cases, fish may even spoil before gear can be retrieved. Ghost fishing by lost gill nets and destruction of fish from inability of harvesters to haul gear during inclement weather have significantly contributed to unaccounted mortality in the cod fishery. As well, high grading within the fishery can be a problem as larger fish demand a greater price. With harvesters taking a greater role in management of resources through the development of co-management strategies and stewardship programs, as well as many papers written on impacts of gear types, the time is right to look at conservation-minded and sustainable alternative fishing methods for cod. POTS represent an alternative approach to harvesting cod that in no way harms the fish during the capture process. The use of rigid framed pots as an alternative harvesting method for cod in Newfoundland and Labrador was first considered in 1999. An established fishery using similar technology to harvest specific cod was being conducted in Alaska. An assessment of the cod pot fishery from Kodiak Island was conducted in 1999 and 2000 to obtain a better understanding of how such gear would be fished from small vessels around Newfoundland and Labrador. The cod pot fishery in Alaska is very lucrative with millions of pounds of cod being harvested per year. During May and November of 2000, cod pot experiments were completed in Codroy on the southwest coast of Newfoundland. Various prototypes were tested, of which some were similar in shape to what was used in Alaska. Three important characteristics were discovered. Fish could remain alive for up to 10 days in a pot. The prototype pot with a floating roof section at a higher catch rate than a pot without the floating section and the combination of trapezoid rectangular funnels with a floating roof improved catch rates significantly. Testing continued in 2001-2002 and focused on two aspects, how additional changes to pot prototypes could improve catch rates and the collection of underwater video of cod behavior around pots. During these fishing trials, a prototype pot using circled funnels was tested. The catch rate of a circular funnel pot tripled that of other type pots. Further experiments were completed on circular funnel pots in Placentia Bay in December of 2003-2004. It was discovered that pots with circled funnels always caught more fish than pots with other funnel types. The catch rates of circle funnel pots were then compared to standard 5.5 inch mesh size 50 fathoms gill net. A circle funnel pot captured as much as gillnets in terms of numbers of fish captured and catch per unit effort CPUE. In many cases, the circle funnel pots caught twice as many fish as gillnets over a 24 hour period. In 2005, work was completed on circle funnel pots fishing alongside fishing gears used in the Sentinel program. The main purpose here was to collect further data on catch rates and controlled approach. Sentinel harvesters would set up regular Sentinel commercial gear and experimental gears alongside experimental pots and collect information on catches. Petley on Random Island, where pots were used in September and November, averaged 50 fish per two pots, while one 50-fathom gill net averaged 30 fish over a 24-hour period. As well, gears were fished at different times during the year to see if seasonal variation in cod behavior played a role in catchability. Areas like southern Labrador did see shifts in pot catchability as bait fish moved out of the area. 
cod were hungrier and therefore enter the pots and increase the CPUE in September from what was experienced in July and August of 2005. Cod pots work best in the fall of the year, coincidentally a time when cod is at its premium in quality. This further added justification to the fact that cod potting is a fishery that is dependent on timing and seasonality. This timing and seasonal changes will have major influences on pot efficiency. In 2007, harvesters from Newfoundland were involved in a project that demonstrated cod pots in specific areas. The harvesters used these pots to catch their quotas, and while this was happening, these harvesters offered opportunities for other harvesters to come along to observe operations. Last year when we were using the pots for doing some work with Marine Institute, we had, on two occasions I can remember right now, we had that much fish into certain into pots that we could not take them in over the side of the boat. We had to pull the strings and release them. So they were really doing really good catch rates. Uh, one day in particular, we hauled the pots in an hour and a half after that, we had another 50, 55 fish in a matter of an hour and a half. And I'm talking fish that's anywhere from, say 45 centimeters up to 120 centimeters like that. And it's really good, really good catches. In addition to the commercial opportunity, cod potting has practical applications in the areas of fisheries management and aquaculture. Over the past three years, DFO have used pots as the main harvesting method for tagging cod in Smith Sound. They have tagged thousands of fish and are now in the process of expanding this approach to other areas around Newfoundland. We're interested in the pots as a means of catching live healthy fish for research purposes. You know, we use them back in the lab here for physiological work and we use them for catching fish for tagging where they're released and it's very important that the fish are in really good shape so that when they're released they swim off and we learn things about the fish migration patterns. The pods have also been used to collect cod for brood stock for aquaculture and for the cod grow out in bay bowls. Baited pots have the potential to solve major outstanding problems in the Atlantic cod fishery in Newfoundland and Labrador. With continued research, cod pots will eliminate the destruction of cod associated with harvesters not being able to retrieve traditional gears because of inclement weather. Most harvesters agree that cod pots do not kill fish. Fish can remain alive in pots for many days after being captured. For this reason, cod pots do not contribute to unaccounted fishing mortality and also provides top quality product for local, national and international markets. Cod pots do not contribute to ghost fishing. Baited traps have an escape mechanism installed in the side of the trap that will deteriorate after 20 to 40 days if the trap is lost or abandoned. Pots do not target specific year classes of Atlantic cod. Gillnets have consistently removed large fish from the population. These large fish are considered to be the best breeders that contribute to future recruitments. Pots, by comparison, remove a percentage of all year classes, which is a healthier and more sustainable harvesting technique. Pots do improve discard survivability. As mentioned earlier, baited pots do not kill fish and all species are in good physical condition when brought on board. Incidental catch of non-targeted species and undersized fish can be released alive. Pots offer new possibilities of tagging Atlantic cod with little or no damage to the fish from the harvesting method. Fish can be brought to the surface slowly with no damage to the extremities, the trap can be placed in live wells, fish removed one at a time, tagged and released. Pots are collapsible and a six and a half by six and a half foot by 40 inch trap can be folded to a trap that's just six inches high. This will allow small vessels the ability to carry many more traps to the fishing grounds. Atlantic cod harvested by traps are alive and if proper onboard handling practices are adhered to, then fish will be grade A quality. I think in the future of the cod pots, they will become more realistic than the old type of fishing with the gill nets. 
uh, mainly because there's a way better quality of fish with the with the cod pots than the, than the gill nets. And I think maybe there will be a higher price for pot cod than gill net cod. We are living in somewhat more enlightened times uh, in terms of sustainability and better resource management practices. But we're also driven there. We're driven there by a variety of considerations. Some of it is economic. I mean, if we have better selectivity devices, maybe we can have higher uh, quota levels and uh, higher levels of sustainability. Well, obviously, there's an economic motivation in that. But there's another perspective as well. You know, what we're seeing increasingly in the world is that uh, people, consumers, are becoming much more conscious and aware of sustainability issues. And uh, for instance, in, in, in uh, some areas of the world, particularly in Europe, the United Kingdom, Germany, uh, the retailers want to see evidence of sustainability. They want to see a demonstration that you're using the best methods of being selective and ensuring that you have sustainable harvesting practices. And uh, that accountability is driven from that side as well, from the demand side. And there, there's value in that because if you're, to the extent that you're able to show the marketplace that you're harvesting uh, in a responsible, sustainable uh, fashion, then you will enjoy the benefit of higher prices as well. So there's an economic motivation uh, associated with this from the point of view of having potentially higher quotas and also getting paid more for the catch. The pot size is six and a half feet by six and a half feet by 40 inches high and entrances are circular in shape on the inside and square on the section that attaches to the pot. The pot frame is constructed of one half inch and five eighth inch round stock mild steel with a four inch polyethylene mesh covering top, sides and bottom. There are two entrance ways per trap with a non-return mechanism, NRM fish retention device attached to the inside of each funnel. Netting used on each entrance is made from two inch white knotless and funnel depth is 20 meshes deep. Pots were designed and constructed at the Center for Sustainable Aquatic Resources in St. John's, Newfoundland. A cod pot can provide an excellent quality of fish. Uh, I mean, it's uh, on par with open line. And I mean, a gill net fish, you know, you can leave these pots in the water for a week. And when you take them back, the fish is alive and in perfect condition. Versus a gill net, if it was out for a week, you pull it up and you'd have to throw it everything away. It wouldn't be fit to eat. If you'd like to receive more information on cod potting, please call 1-800-563-5799. Research and development of this and other innovative projects have been the collaborative effort of the Fisheries and Marine Institute of Memorial University, the Canadian Centre for Fisheries Innovation, the Department of Fisheries and Aquaculture, Fisheries and Oceans Canada, and the Fish, Food and Allied Workers.